Hey everybody. So I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while now and <laughs> actually I had a new addition to the Roll and Write game collection of our basement. So I added it to my list of Roll and Writes in order of my dislike to my like aka screams to smiles. So if you are colorblind, I apologize. I am trying to color code my games to let you know where it lies in the red, which is where I'm starting, which is super angry and then frustrating, to yellow, and then I'm going to end with my top picks for the roll and rights that I enjoy playing that I think are really good, and then and that time I'll be wearing green. So from red to yellow to green, here is my list of roll and rights from Screams to Smiles. Divi Dice! Divi Dice gets my coveted bottom of the pile. Divi Dice? No. No thank you. When nothing you do on your turn actually does anything, that's terrible. And that happened to me so many times when I played this. I was never able to utilize my opponent's dice when they were able to utilize my dice, the cards I picked, no matter how flexible and versatile they were. I could never finish my stinking cards and I could never get the victory points. So stink on you, Divi Dice, boo, boo, boo. Never a fun experience. I don't think I've ever screamed as much as when I played Divi Dice. Medici the Dice Game. This game I just don't think is great. <laughs> and what I mean by that is when you're playing, you try to get majority in something, and if you don't get it, then you lose out on the big points and somebody else gets them. And so if you've put all your focus in on the goods or on the shipping aspect with the high numbers and you don't get it, well, then you just don't win. And you can try for it, and get second or nothing, and you, that's a, that you just lose then. And I don't like that. Um, so um, Medici, the dice game, not fun. And I really wanted it to be fun. Not so fun. Catan, the dice game. I've only ever really played this solo. Uh, usually when I'm super bored, I had this at school. Whenever I had like breaks and stuff, I'd pull it out and play it. And it just is a roll and then try to get your things and then uh, mutate your, you know, you can change out your sheep and get something else and then gold nuggets, two nuggets equals a wild and you just like right on a track. It's just not engaging. It's not fun and you never roll what you want. And so your scores are always really crappy. So um, yeah, this just does not hit my table and this isn't something that I um, usually share with people and I don't know why I keep doing it to myself where I play this alone and just get sad, but I do. So, Catan Dice Game, bottom of my pile. Encore. Encore makes me crazy and I... I always play and everyone else gets the colors before me and everyone else gets the columns before me and everyone else does everything else before me and I can never seem to line up my pips with the colors and with the sections and um, you make me crazy. So not as crazy as these three, but Encore just makes me anxious. So when it says you will want to play again and again, maybe but it's also torture, so not so much. Not so much Encore, so meh, meh. Bad Encore. Dizzle. While Dizzle is a fine game, it just doesn't get me. It doesn't make me think, it doesn't make me feel like I am getting anywhere closer to being successful or having a good time. Um, I'm not sure that I like how you can get yourself cut off and of course the dice you need you don't roll because you only have two options of dice that can be adjacent or you know in the area that you need to get the area in and it's just I don't know a little bit too much luck and if you're not necessarily planning or strategic you can really just get yourself in a pickle uh, particularly if you want to go for certain goals in this on your dry erase board so um, Dizzle, mm, mm, mm. still red shirt as you can tell, doesn't make me happy. So to round out my red shirt games, the ones that kind of make me scream, 
is hex roller. Now hex roller is fine, but it, I don't know, I felt like I was doing super well and then we tallied up the score and my opponent really did so much better than I did and I wondered why I was playing so poorly um, and, and kind of like where my strategy went wrong. And so I think it needs another try. It is on the cusp of red shirt to yellow shirt. So I, I w I'm willing to bump this into the yellow shirt zone if I give it a couple more plays. Um, but right now it just kind of bumps over to the edge. When I look at all the other games, roll and rights, I want to play them more than I want to play this right now. So hex roller, you're in the bottom. Okay, so I'm back for the middle pack of my rolling rights. These are the games that I think favorably of, but are not at the top, top level. So, at the bottom of my yellow track is going to be Copenhagen rolling right. Maybe it's because I expected more of this, but there can be some really co good combinations that just completely let one player just trounce all over all the other players and they just rock it to that victory point crossover and make it almost impossible for anybody else to catch up. And I don't necessarily know exactly what that strategy is. Uh, maybe you can tell that <laughs> it's not me who's doing that. But I think that with this one too, the thing I found is if you don't roll great numbers, you don't roll your colors, you can't do anything and it's frustrating like you watch somebody else roll four blues and then you roll two of every kind well you can't because there's five but you know what i mean like it's two two and one and you're like great no wilds and you're just sitting there going this is dumb and so you take your turn and you put an x in one of your bonus tracks and that's it and so it really comes down to the rolls so bottom of my yellow pile boo copenhagen rolling right Okay, Roll to the Top I think is a perfectly fine game. The reason it's so low on my track is that it's so easy to mess up in this game. Now the only rule you have to follow is that every time you put a number above another number it needs to be that number or higher. And it's cool that you get to roll all these different sided dice to create different amounts of numbers up all the way up to 20 in your 20 sided die down to your four sider. Um, but it's just so easy to mess up in this game and then you get to the end and someone says they triggered the end and you look at their board and it's kind of a mess because they cheated. And you know it's accidental cheating but you're breaking the rules because you've got so much to keep track of, you've got so many numbers to write down, you have a lot of choices to make and yes there are a lot of really cool maps in here for the dry erase boards, um, but the game is just a little bit harder than it first appears, and you have to just be really, really careful with your um, with the rules. That's it. So, at the bottom of my yellow, great game. Okay, so bricks. Bricks is kind of like that Tetris. It's kind of falling down into place, um, and there are some really cool things about the shapes um, based on the colors and which shape you get. It's kind of forgettable though. So that's why it's in the bottom of my yellow. Um, I, I look at bricks and I go, eh? And I just don't think anything. I don't have any feelings toward it, really. Obviously not strong feelings either way, so I don't scream and I don't smile when I see it. Um, so yeah, cool. I like that 2D old school video game feel. Meh about my emotion toward it. Ripple Rush. Ripple Rush can be great or it can be crap. Now here's the thing. When it's great it's really fun and it makes you feel like you're making all these cool choices. Now if it's crap it's because the cards you draw are literally worse than the cards everyone else is drawing. So if you're drawing only the same color in that particular column then you're just going to have too many of those. They're not going to fit in and you're going to share your numbers in that particular um, column, whether it's the hex or the circle or the square or the triangle. And then other people are going to get those in addition to the ones that they're getting. And so you just sit there and watch everyone else get all the cards they want and all the cards they need. And all you do is just keep drawing the same crap row. And you're like, awesome. This is so cool. I'm having so much fun. 
and you get no bonuses because you can't get anything else in any other color. So Ripple Rush, again, can be great when it's great and you get a versatile, like a variety of numbers, but if you don't, then just sit there and watch everyone else have fun. Okay, so Harvest Dice. I played Harvest Dice a lot and it's just so simple. And I think maybe that's why it's in the middle of my list is because um, it's cute and you get to draw carrots and lettuce and tomatoes might always look atrocious. They look so bad because I can't draw anything. Um, but again, with the dice and the, and the columns, you may get your little, you know, um, uh, areas, you might just not get the areas finished, you might not get the right grouping or combination for the best victory point scoring, and it's all based on what everybody else is doing at the table too, so I like the player interaction here. Uh, I just think that maybe it's just a little bit too simple or straightforward to really reach the top of my roll and write chart. Cute! I love, I love harvest themes. Mosaics. Um, recently pulled it off, dusted it off, and had a really great time with it. So I'm nearing the top of my yellow, my my middling roll and writes, and I think this one actually works. This one works because everyone is essentially making good decisions on their turn, and they're making decisions with a limited amount of dice. And I, I like it. I like that one person is making the design and then everybody at the table has to take that design and fit it into their um, player sheet. And then the next person is going to roll the dice and they're going to get the square, the circle, not the square, the triangle, the circle, or the X. And then they have to create a design and then everyone else has to put that in. So everyone is having a say-so on everybody's board. It's interactive. There's a little bit of a fudge factor here that they allow you to kind of put over as long as it's the same symbol, the same shape. You can like cross over into already written areas. This is really cool. It's it's just super abstract. And I think that's why it's still in the, you know, it's the high end of my yellow, but I think it's good. Mosaics is just good. So if you remember this, it's it's better than than you than you remember. I'm a huge fan of Can't Stop, <laughs> uh, and this is Can't Stop Express, and I think it actually does a really good job of can't stopping without getting out all of the little traffic cones and having the dice and having the little white traffic cones and the big old plastic board with the stop sign. In Express, you have your own sheet, you're rolling the dice, but everybody is really trying to maximize the combination so everyone's taking different combinations and if you get a lot of one particular combination like let's say seven or eight or six then you're gonna get victory points past a certain threshold but if you start super hard ones you're gonna get negative points and they are a lot of negative points um, this game is fun it's easy and I like playing it when I don't want to pull out can't stop the big game and rounding out my yellow zone of rollin' rights that don't make me scream or smile is Bloom. Bloom is interesting. You are creating these combinations of flower bouquets that you want to give out and um, kind of like Encore. If you finish a certain color before everyone else, you're going to get victory points for it. Um, but there is like a gradation of victory points, so the first person gets more, but you can still get points. And if you finish these little um, groupings, there's six uh, divisions on your player board, then you're going to get victory points for those two. Um, I think it's it's fine. It's, it's small, it's fast, but it kind of leaves me much like Harvest Dice, where it's really simple. And I play it, and then I kind of just leave and go, oh, okay, that was Bloom. And then we just kind of like pack up and move on. And it's not necessarily memorable, but it's worth playing. And I think that there's the versatility in the, the dice dice rolling and where you're circling what you want to circle. So doesn't make you scream. Maybe doesn't make you smile either. 
So before I move on to my top tier roll and writes, I wanted to add two more roll and writes that I just couldn't find in the game room until right now. So here they are. Rolling America. I absolutely love the idea of Rolling America, and my Rolling America never looks good by the end. <laughs> and it becomes super frustrating. But I like the idea of the color coding and the dice, and dice being next to other lines, either as the same number or one going higher or one going lower, and really having to plan out your America map with these ascending and descending numbers because it just almost always goes to crap <laughs> at some point. Um, so I like Rolling America. I like how fast it is. I don't know if I've ever won a Rolling America, but I do have a pretty good time. So Rolling America is going to go into my yellow stack that I enjoy, but don't necessarily leave me feeling great afterwards. So I'm going to stick Rolling America right in here. And then the other one is Seven Bridges. I backed this on Kickstarter and was super excited to get it because I love the idea of the strolling right through Konigsberg. And it's really cool with the exception of the scoring. And this kind of comes into play with the mistakes that you make and roll to the top. Um, the end scoring is just everyone spending 10 minutes counting all of your trees, counting all of your buildings, counting all of your exits, counting all of your this, counting everything. And so it becomes super tedious, but I do like this and I do want to explore it more and play it even more than I already have, but I like it. I think it works really well. Um, with a variety of players. Uh, I just think that it might have some end game scoring where people could mess up super easy, um, but they also could just get really tired and just bored with the scoring because everyone has to count up all their own stuff. So Seven Bridges is going to go right above Roll to the Top and right below Bricks in the yellow section. Okay, so green means go all the way. These games in this section for roll and rights are always wins in my book, no matter whether I win or not. I love these and I will play them anytime. I will share them with anybody and I think they're just really, really good games. So a very new game that just made it into this video is Rajas of the Ganges Roll and Write. I am a huge fan of Rajas of the Ganges, and I will play that game anytime. I play that online, I play that whenever I can get people to play it with me. So if I don't want to get into that big of a game and a board game, this is actually a really, really good version of that in dice and paper version. I am I'm just so stunned, I'm shocked that this game works so well. So you have the same kind of um, dice rolling and selection of where you want to place your, your action, essentially. So there's the river, there's all the different people that give you the bonuses, there's the way of getting your monuments kind of beefed up, and then there's this giant map in the center, and you're going to be like mapping your way around getting market points and sanctuary points and all sorts of stuff. I think Rajas of the Ganges Roll and Write is a stunner. So this absolutely makes it onto my green shirt list for Roll and Writes. I will pull this out quite regularly. So very exciting, absolutely love it. I think it's great. The next one is Ganshin Clever. So this game and <laughs> twice as clever um, I don't know this one, Dot Built So Clever. I'll have my husband tell me that that was wrong because he speaks German. But these two are both kind of back to back for me in this place. I think for me, like this was the game that just kind of revolutionized the roll and write for me. I think there's so much 
coolness with this game and how it works and what you do and how you get to take dice essentially pips on somebody else's turn and you're making your turn and you're writing in all these different places with like bing bong bonuses and cascades and there's there's just so much here i never see someone who's left so far behind or someone that just shoots so far ahead you always feel like you're in it sure you want certain things and you may not get them but at least your whole game is not devastated because of it so i like this i also like the newer um twice as clever it adds other really cool combinations and just strategic choices. I, I like that because when you have the roll and write, you don't want just roll and then you just have to like take crap. I think that's that's terrible. So um, the roll and write means you roll and then obviously get to make really cool choices. So Gunshin Clever and Twice as Clever does that for me. Fleet! The dice game. And <laughs> this is intense. Players have two sheets that they have to keep track of, so there's a lot of stuff to think about. I am not like the biggest into underwater deep sea stuff, but for me, this works. And I love the dice, I love the choices. I think there's so much here that it might actually be overwhelming. This is definitely a more complex roll and write. So if you're trying to introduce people to roll and writes, don't start here, but maybe end here. This is a clever game where you are trying to upgrade your ships, go in deep sea, dive fish for even cooler, better, you know, victory point scoring opportunities. It's just good. It's just good. So, Fleet the Dice Game, just good. And now for my number one roll and write, Octo Dice. Now, you know I just said that I'm not into deep sea fishing and ocean adventure themes, and I'm shocked that Fleet the Dice Game and Octo Dice topped my chart, but they topped them for a really, really specific reason. I think they're both very clever. I think they both encourage you to make tough decisions. And I just like that kind of push and pull of you trying to maximize your turn and really just taking advantage of all the choices that they offer. These games, you cannot do everything in them. And maybe that's kind of like, um, I know in Mosaics you finish, in Bloom you try to finish, in Harvest you get really close to finishing, and, and, and it roll to the top. You've got these where you get to complete things, and I think that maybe in Fleet, the Dice Game, and Octo Dice, you don't get to do it all, and that really forces you to make good choices and to hopefully make smart choices. Um, I like the re-rolling ability in this, and I also like how... Um, you do uh, take advantage of dice on somebody else's turn, much like you do in um, Gunshin Clever. And so I think that works really well in Octo Dice. So this rounds out my top. I think that any of these games right here, I would absolutely play. I give it the green light. Yes. Um, I will play those in my middle section. I will hesitate before playing those in my red section. Um, just maybe give me a Diet Dr. Pepper and, I don't know, spicy sweet Doritos beforehand, and then maybe I'll be pacified <laughs> enough to play the game. Um, but I hope you enjoyed my roll and writes from Screams to Smiles. I'll see you next time. Hmm. No. Where is the other roll and write? I did have one more. Oh. <gasps>